I use a camp pillow. Let's talk about why I add the weight of this comparatively luxurious item, even as an alpine climber. Hello again, everyone. I'm Jason. A camp pillow is undeniably a luxury item to take on a backpacking trip, let alone an alpine climb. So why would I pay the cost of these 2.8 ounces or 79 grams? Well, certainly it's for comfort, but the rationale is not as simple as that single word. The truth is that taking this singular item complete with its weight cost allows me to both sleep better and carry lighter than I otherwise would. Let's start with sleeping better. For me, sleeping better comes down to two things, body position and warmth. Body position is important to everyone in order to avoid soreness, and we all know that keeping your spine in alignment at the neck will help you sleep better. But there's another reason, and this is particularly for backpacking or climbing trips at higher altitudes. Sleeping at altitude can create a condition called chain stokes breathing. Chain stokes is a kind of apnea. Basically, you stop breathing for a protracted period of time, and then you quickly breathe in as your body demands oxygen. That quick and full breath wakes you up, canceling out your ability to sleep. It can happen at altitude because your body's normal mechanism for breathing is actually not based on the need for oxygen. You respirate because you are too full of carbon dioxide. Well, at altitude, because you breathe faster, you expel carbon dioxide quickly. Your body doesn't get the signal to respirate because of too much CO2. So only when you become oxygen starved or hypoxic does your body shift to its backup mechanism and demand a breath in order to feed oxygen to your cells. I experienced this for the first time when I slept just below 5,000 meters or about 16,300 feet in Ecuador. And what I found to help me was sitting more upright. And lo and behold, there's actually clinical evidence that sleeping more upright can reduce the incidence or severity of chain stokes, although this was a study of patients with the apnea due to heart failure. But it worked for me too, nonetheless. The pillow helps me sleep more upright. But couldn't you sleep with your spine straight and in a more upright position by just using your pack or clothes stuffed in a sleeping bag sack or using the rope as a pillow? Yes, but everything in the outdoors has trade-offs. This is where carrying lighter weight comes into the equation. I can take a hoodless down quilt instead of a full sleeping bag and add a reduction of almost a pound or 0.45 kilograms. But that requires that I wear a jacket, which I'm already bringing anyway, under the quilt to have that hood. That means I'm likely missing my puffiest piece of clothing to add to the stuff sack in place of a pillow. Also a pillow, at least one with added insulation and a knit surface for your head, like my Sea to Summit Eros Premium, lets me have a warmer surface than a stuff sack or a backpack or a climbing rope would do. That means the lighter hood of my jacket is more than enough to keep my head warm in temps below zero degrees Fahrenheit or minus 18 Celsius. So by adding less than three ounces, I end up having a system that can be a pound less in the grand scheme of things. Take a look at my video on getting a zero degree Fahrenheit sleeping system down to three pounds total or 1.4 kilograms to learn more and to consider some other potential trade-offs. Thanks for coming to the end of this video. Please hit that like button. Please subscribe and ring that bell. Check out our website at shortguysbetaworks.com to find gear lists, all of our videos, and additional thoughts and information. Do you have any tricks of the trade when it comes to getting a good night's sleep in the wild? Let us know in the comments. See you next week and keep on getting more out of that big outside.